Hey everyone, Linda from Let's Talk Preppy. I'm going to bring you some headlines today and I want you to see how they're going to impact your life. That's the only reason I'm bringing them to you. You have to make a decision. Are these headlines going to affect me? Now the other thing I want you to think about is if they're going to affect you, how can you minimize the effect they will have on your life? What can you do about it? What should you do? What are you willing to do? Because still, so many people are saying, I just don't understand what you're saying. Everything's in my grocery store. I'm not having any problems getting food or anything else. I really don't think anything's going to happen. So no matter what you're thinking, is it going to happen? Isn't it going to happen? Maybe it's going to happen. Check out these headlines and see if they will alter your thinking and what you're going to do about it. So let's go look at a few right now. Okay, the first one is over here at lawenforcementtoday.com, lawenforcementtoday.com. And it says, one of the nation's largest police forces is facing a severe staffing crisis. Nearly 1,300 officers, and it's only going to get worse. So this is in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they're short 1,300, 1,300 police officers. And more cops are leaving. So we have that. Will that affect you? Of course it will if you live in Philadelphia and any other cities that are facing the same problems. Naturalnews.com, Polish homeowners face freezing to death this winter as they line up for days sleeping in their cars just to buy coal. And that's today's date, August 31st, 2022. So they're lining up just to buy coal because as you know, Russia has cut off the natural gas to Europe and they are going to need the coal. And if we just go down here a little bit, I thought this was interesting. This um, person drove over there and stayed in his hatchback for a few days waiting to buy coal. And this is what he said. I remember the communist times, but it didn't cross my mind that we could return to something even worse. Now you're saying, well, we've got all the energy we need here. We don't have any problem. Yes, that might be true, but you know how prices are just going up and they're really predicting this winter that energy prices are going to just go out of this world. And here from shtfplan.com, Millions are back under lockdown in China. So China has just locked down a couple of uh, cities, some areas. So that's something. And natural news, eat nothing and be happy. Globalists still attempting to manufacture acceptance of engineered food collapse. And this is yesterday, August 30th. And I just wanted to read to you what they said here. And this was from an old article published by the UN website. And it says, The Benefits of World Hunger. And it was written by a University of Hawaii political science professor, George Kent. And he said, now listen to this. This is what he thinks. Hunger has great positive value to many people. Indeed, it is fundamental to the working of the world's economy. Hungry people are the most productive people, especially where there is a need for manual labor. How many of us would sell our services if it were not for the threat of hunger? More importantly, how many of us would sell our services so cheaply if it were not for the threat of hunger? So he's saying that it's good to have hungry people because they're going to work. He also claims that elites that elites and everyone else in the high end of the social ladder gain nothing from ending world hunger. So they gain nothing. He claims that the only reason people would be willing to plow the fields, harvest their vegetables, 
work in the rendering plants and cleaner toilets is the threat of hunger. No wonder people at the high end are not rushing to solve the hunger problem. For many of us, hunger is not a problem, but an asset. Now, this was published in 2008, quite a while ago, but it's happening now. They are pushing hunger. When you think of it, you've got all these things coming together at once. It can't be a coincidence that everything is happening. Supply chain, droughts, getting rid of fertilizer, all these various things that are happening and causing this food collapse. And the elites don't care because they think you're not going to work for them if you're not hungry. Let that sink in a bit. Think about that. Did you ever think you would hear something like that in this day and age? And I always like to give you some uh, news from mainstream media because people say to me, oh, you're always looking at just the alternative news. You're not looking at mainstream media. Well, Yahoo News is mainstream media. Next year's food crisis will be different from this year's. Here's how it could change for the worse in 2023. And basically, he's saying that this year it's a logistics problem. Next year, it could be a supply issue. So that would mean we wouldn't have the food to feed everyone. So this year, it's getting the food to the people. It's logistics. It's because of Ukraine. Next year, there won't be food. So it'll be more than a supply issue. So this is Yahoo News. And this is Red Voice Media. Red Voice Media. Food collapses here. California loses half a million acres of farmland. Crime against humanity. And this is a video that you can look at. And he reports on the collapse of the food supply as half a million acres of farmland in California are left unplanted due to drought, climate regulations, inflation, supply chain issues that have snowballed. Unplanted farmland doubles every year. It's interesting to know that Bill Gates, we know that, is buying massive amounts of farmland and leaving it vacant. This is pushing people into dependence and therefore compliance with the state as grocery store shelves run dry. And at the same time in California, 70,000 trucks have been kicked off the highway in the middle of the supply chain crisis due to a new gig law. Climate regulations are destroying the supply chain and leaving farmers broke on top of the already existing supply and inflation problems. The California electric companies are admitting that they will never be able to charge all the electric cars as combustible engines are banned by 2035 in California. So there we have the food collapses here. California's losing half a million acres of farmland. That'll affect us next year for sure. And rebelnews.com. Chairman of Germany's paper industry says the country may face serious toilet paper shortage. Just thought I'd throw that one in for you. Natural news, weather wars, China faces a serious water catastrophe that will cause global shortages of food, industrial materials, and consumer goods. This is August 28th. So it, should the expected water catastrophe unfold, China's grain and electricity production will fall, global shortage of food, industrial materials, consumer goods, and more on a much greater scale than the current post-pandemic supply chain problems. And it'll be felt by the entire world as the communist country is a major producer of food, energy, and other needed goods and materials. And unlike other commodities, water does not have any viable substitutes. So there's no substitute for water. Without it, we're going to have a problem. 
And this happening all over the U.S. too. It's not just China having a water catastrophe. Look at out west and even some of the eastern states. And uh, foreignaffairs.com, they talk about China's growing water crisis. So I just wanted to bring you all of these different headlines so that you can probably not sleep at night, but so that you can actually think about them and think how it's going to affect you. If China shuts down industrial production and food production, what's going to happen to you? Is it going to be hard to get food in the United States? What else will it be hard to get? Look how energy prices are climbing here. How is that going to affect you this winter? Could you somehow get a wood stove and heat a little bit with wood to counteract some of the price increases? What can you do to counteract these headlines so they'll have minimal effects on you? Please comment down below and let me know if you have any ideas what you can do, what would help in order to mitigate some of this that, of what is going on and in the long run that you will survive. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.